Hey, hey, everybody. Oh, wait, wait, what is this, sir? So, happy Sabbath, um, which is Saturday. And I pray to you guys are having a great day. And if your morning has already got started and it feel a little rough, you know, a little rocky, don't worry, don't trip. Keep on going throughout your day. And trust God that the outcome will be better. And for those of you who are having a great day, God bless you. I'm so happy for you. So, yeah, let me tell y'all, like, God is, like, so super duper amazing. God is real. God God is true. God, God is true. So, on yesterday, I had, like, a headache. Oh, my God. My headache was, oh, my God. It, it was so bad. It was it was really, really bad. And um, and I was, you know, driving down the road, and I was just, it was, it was, it was bad. It was real bad. And so I began to just pray and just talk to God. I began to quote his scriptures back to him, just really just giving him my heart. And immediately, you know, I began to like minister to myself, like, and, you know, through my prayer. And next thing you know, y'all, the headache just lifted. It, it, it lifted because it was God who did it. And I trusted him and I had faith in him. So my headache was no more. I mean, it was really, really bad. It was a lot of pressure. It was bad. It was bad. Um, and so, you know, this morning I woke up. I was laying there talking to God. And then again, God began to, you know, talk to me again, minister to me. And this is one thing I want to I wanna give you an encouraging word. And I want to share something with you. Like, God, with God, is you either you're in or you're not. God does not like lukewarm because he said, if you look, you lukewarm, he said, I will spew you out of my mouth. Uh, Revelation 3, I think it's 3 and 8. And, um, and so I know what brought on my headache because it was, it was really it was like stress. And, and from there, I, you know, God just began to minister to me. That when it comes to God, especially when you're chosen, you can't have one foot in and one foot out. Which means that you can't do what you want to do, like the world way, and get and think you're going to get away with it. Like, I'm in for God. Like, I'm 100% for God. I love God. But at the same time, my flesh should get in the way too. You know, like, nobody's 100% perfect. But God showed me. That anytime we do something, we go against what God's words say. The enemy will get us on the left side. He will get us out there. And we will have fun. We'll be enjoying ourselves. And, and to us, it seems like it's harmless. But with God, God already know that it's going to be detrimental to us. That because when you out on the left side doing what the enemy entice you to do, what your flesh entice you to do. You're having fun. You're partying. You're drinking. You're gambling. You're smoking. You know, whatever you want to do. But when that conscious mind and that heart of yours, when it love almighty God, when it starts waking up, you realize, hey, wait a minute. I got to get this together. See, one thing about the devil, he will get us on that side, on the left side of things, and he'll have his way with it. You know, he give us a little, a little bit of pleasure. But as soon as you wake up and want to go back to your right side on God's side, baby, you got to pay for what you did on that outside. The enemy going to always charge you interest when you on, on, on his side playing around with him and he send you back over there. Your flesh going to make you pay interest for who? Jesus. And you'll find yourself in situations you'll find yourself in a turmoil that that you could have avoided if you had to stay on the right side with God. And so that was that's something that God was ministering to me about. It's either we're going to be in or we're going to be out. You can get on the left side, and sometimes and people have been on the light on the left side. To do whatever they want to do, right? And some had died in their sin. So there's no recovery for that. There's no prayer. None of My daughter had put on Facebook this morning. And she was talking about, you know, how fast somebody can die. You know, how easily they can be gone. And she was saying, like, you know, if people leave, if she leave before anybody else to pray for her soul. And so I had, you know, posted on my daughter. I was telling you, you know, once you're dead and gone, 
there's no more praying for your soul. It's, it's over with. You pray for the soul while it's living. But once you take your last breath, that's it. And if you find yourself in a state, in a, a rebellious state against God, like, God, I don't want you. I don't, I don't even believe in you. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in God. If you find yourself in that type of state and you die in that mindset, there's no recovery for you. There's no recovery for your soul. Nothing. God is so amazing that he's so merciful that he gives us his word. And it's up to us daily to read his word, to study his word. Because there's going to come a time when you're going to find yourself in a situation. You ain't going to know what to do. You ain't going to know how to pray. You ain't going to have nobody to call on. But you, when you remember that a scripture that you read in the Bible, uh, a, a, a story that you read in the Bible, and you begin to you know, recite that word back to God, that, that story back to God, and you begin to like grab a hold to it and say, hey, God, like I need you. God will come in and save you. But if you don't have anything deposit, deposited in your spirit, when, you, when these situations come up on you, you ain't going to know what to say. You ain't going to know how to call on the Father. You literally not going to know what to say to God. So that's the, that's the reason that we need to read our Bible, study our Bible. For that very reason. And without doing that, yeah, we lose every time. And God is so merciful. Like I said, he loves us and he gives us that chance. Because like the Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. Which means it's telling you what to do while you're here. It's telling you what to do that when you leave this earth. It's telling you what to do. To, in order, you know, when you leave your body suit, like if you're going to have heaven, you're going to have hell. Now, we're not going to always be perfect. Oh, no, we're not. But anything that we do, we need to do it in moderation. The reason why I say in moderation, because sometimes you can do some things and it can pull you so far out on the left side to baby, you'll be stuck and don't know how to go back to the right side. But when you got a relationship with Jesus Christ, when you got a relationship with Almighty God, and the only reason you can, the only way you can have a relationship with God, you have to, have to, have to, have to have a relationship with Almighty Jesus. You have to know who he is. You have to know about his death, his birth, his death, and his resurrection. You have to know the reason why he came to this earth. You have to know why he allowed the, the Jews to kill him. You have to know why he allowed himself to be crucified. You have to know why he allowed the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Sanhedrin. You have to know why he allowed these things to happen to his life and to his body. You have to know these things. Because when you know these things and when you believe in these things, that anything that come up on you, you'll remember. Like, for God I live, for God I die. You have to remember the ways of Jesus, the things that Jesus went through, the, Jesus, the things that Jesus taught us in order to make it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, those Hebrew boys, all four of them, when they wanted to eat the death, when, when the king wanted them to, to enjoy his delicacies, they said, no, let us just drink vegetables and water. What happened there? They knew that what the world was eating, what the king was eating, would not be good for their spirit, be good for their soul. So therefore, they said, we're not going to eat that. Let us eat vegetable for 10 days. When the 10 days was over, the Enoch's, when they came back, they seen that Daniel and his friends was looking much better than the, than the young boys who ate the, the king's delicacies. What God is saying... When you eat the world's way, when you sup on the world's way of doing things, and when you decide to delight yourself in the way that the world does, does things, you will not look like the way that God says. If you don't eat on the word of God, if you don't fast, if you don't pray, if you don't get your flesh under submission to do the, do the thing that God says. So God give us a free choice. He know we are in this world, but you don't have to be of this world, which means you are here. But when you have a relationship with God, when you say, God, look, I want to do this thing your way. Because, God, what I'm doing, God, it ain't just for material possession, God. It's for my spirit. It's for my soul. And when you have that mindset to say that to God, honey, that's when you show up in a great relationship. Um, the, um, Daniel and his friends, they gain wisdom. They gain understanding. They gain knowledge. 
because they ate things that was that, that blessed their soul. So when it comes to the world's way, if you're doing things that's going to hinder your soul, that's going to make you feel down and down, make you feel depressed, that you don't want to do. But if you're in your word, you're reading your word, you um you having wholesome conversations, you know, if you're doing things that's pleasing to God, which your, your conscious mind is always on what would Jesus do, then baby, you will have a full life, you will have a understanding, you will have wins, you have a great life. And, 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 when, and when crazy things start to happen, you will know how to pray. Like I did. I knew how to pray when that headache was on me so bad. I had asked God for something, and he did exactly what I asked him to do. Not because I was so perfect, but because I had a willing heart. I trusted him, and I had faith in him that he would do it. But the number one thing, I have a relationship with God. I have a relationship with God through, through the blood of Jesus, what Jesus has done for my life. And the thing is about what, when it comes to God, what I love about God. Now, this thing that God is not fair about, but he's fair about. It don't matter if you just spend 30, you, you just 30 seconds decide, like, Lord, I want to do it your way. If your heart and your mind and your soul, if you really, really ready and you really, really truthful and honest with it, that even you could have been living like a heathen all your life. But in that 30 seconds, you say, God, I want you. God will turn it around for you. He would do the same thing for you that he did for somebody that's been walking to, with him for 30 years. God loves, he loves just people. God loves people who have faith in him, people who trust in him. That's what I love about God. He don't have no respect to person. He don't have no favoritism. In fact, the truth be told, God loves those the who are out there in the world doing what they want to do. But when they get the conscious mind to say, hey, wait a minute, I better get me some God. I better get God. God loves them people. God loves the people that people look down and say that they're nothing or they're this and they God loves them. I mean, God loves them, loves them, loves them, loves them. He loves them. He loves he love to see people come back into the fold. He loves to see people come back to them. Jesus loves it. And, and I thank God. I thank God. It, it, it don't take God no, no one month to say, well, let me see if, if you're really ready. No. If you talk to Almighty God and you call on him and you say, God, I'm ready. God, I need you to change me from the inside out. God, I need you. If you are really, really ready and you mean it with your whole heart, baby, God will turn that thing around for you. Honey, 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 honey. And, 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 and like I said, what a man sow, he reap. But the thing is about it. While you reaping and going back through the things that you're doing, that when you in Christ, it won't hurt you that bad. Them daggers won't hurt you that bad. Them fiery darts won't hurt you that bad. Because now you can hide in, in with the Almighty. You can hide in His shadow. You can hide under His wings. Like, God is so awesome. So I just want to recur encourage you. The recovery that I'm speaking about, you can't recover after that. When you have taken your last breath, when you're no longer here on this earth and you don't walk this earth anymore there's no recovery there's no praying for your soul there's no asking for forgiveness it's over with my cousin Max said you hit you hit mean it's done it's over with it's nothing else but why are you on this side and if you know that you don't have your relationship together with Almighty God if you know that your life is not pleasing to what God wants, if you know that you that you having a struggle, you having a tough time in, in, in your flesh, this is the time where you have breath in your body that you can stand before God. You can bow down on your knees in submission. You can get on the floor in submission and receive and ask God to help you. God desires that each and every one of us, each and every one of us have our mansion. Jesus said he goes to prepare a place for us. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. He said, where I go, he desired for us to go too. So while Jesus is up there pre preparing your nice comfy bed, he's up there preparing your, 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 your good delicacy, your great food. He's up there preparing these things for you. He's making a way for you for the real world. Because this is not the real world. This is temporary. For the real where he's up there preparing this for you. You know that you have to get one with God in order to have what Jesus has for you. Because baby, the beds down here ain't comfy like those. The life down here ain't comfy like the life up there. 
You know what I'm saying? And he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will never. And then there will be a new Jerusalem. All of this, the word, everything is going to pass away. But there will be a new kingdom of God. And the thing about it, the only person who's going to get in there, those who follow the ways of Jesus, those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, he's the only way to get you on that path to God. And the only way you're going to get you going to love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Jesus has paved the way for us. All we got to do is get our little 50 selves on that road. And yeah, it's going to be a little tough while you're trying to get up on that road. But you get you some friends, some kids, some friends who really, really love you. You get you some prayer partners. You get you some people that, that loves you and want to see you on that same road with them. And you begin to walk out your own salvation. Can't nobody else do it for you. But you can have friends that can minister to you and just say, hey, you can do it. You can do it. So I just want to encourage you. There's no recovery when you die. And if you go to hell, there's no recovery coming from hell. There's none. There's no none. There's no recovery from the lake of fire. None. There's no recovery if you die and you on the outside of the gate with the dogs and the sorcerers and the whoremongers and the liars and the gossipers and the, all that. There's no recovery. None. 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 You can be out there all day long. Ah, let me in, God. Ah, let me in. It's not going to happen. It's not. So while you here and you in your little fleshly um, birthday suit and body suit, you talk to God. You ask God to help you. You fast. You pray. That's the only way, the only way that you can begin to crucify your flesh. Don't let your flesh take you to a place where God isn't. Don't let your flesh take you to a place where there's an eternal without God. Child, no. That's the word for the day. Happy Sabbath, and I love you guys. Talk to y'all later.